Hello, hello dear friends around the world. How is everybody doing? I hope you guys are doing good. Um, as for me, thank God I have been doing great. Um, today I come to you with the same uh, notion that's to discuss about the lives of exposing the lives of Muslim teachers, especially uh, Dr. Zakir Naik. I have been working on this. I think this is the 11th part. We'll continue um, uh, finding out what this guy is saying and what the reality or the truth is. Now, uh, let us let us uh, listen uh, from him today from the YouTube uh, channel, and um, I'm going to say something about it. All of this say that there are various different authors of each book. The Bible is derived from the Greek word Biblos, meaning the book of books. <sighs> the book of uh, Biblos means a book of books. Biblos means for um, Dr. Zakir Naik, it means the book of books. But let us see what Biblos means. Let us see what Biblos means. Now let me take you to the book of Genesis chapter 5. Chapter 5 verse 1. This is the book of the generation of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. God made man in the likeness of God. This is the English version that is Biblos. This book, book. Okay, now we see this book. Now I'm going to read it from the Hebrew. The, the Sefer, the Sefer Tuludot Adam. This is the generation of Adam, the book of the generation of Adam. Sefer, not Seferim, but Sefer. Sefer is singular and it is a Hebrew name. The Sefer Tuludot Adam. The book of the generations of the generation of Adam. Let's go to the uh, the um, the um, Greek and read it from the Greek uh, portion. Genesis uh, five one. Out a hey biblos biblos. This is biblos biblos. Genesios anthropon is the, the the book of man. The book of the general the genealogy of man or the generation of man. How they hey biblos genesios anthropon. This is just, uh, that's what he said. He says the book of books. Can anybody say this is a book of books? Now let's see that the um, this is the book is the book the book is the book suffer. One is a single book. Uh, let me go to the um, other, um, okay, let me take you to um, John, John chapter, um, no, Matthew, 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 the, uh, Matthew 1, Matthew 1, the, the gospel of Matthew, and let us search the word Biblos. Um, this says the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Now let's let's see the Greek, the original. Biblos Genesios. This Biblos. This is Biblos. Now let's see what what does it mean. Biblos means. Biblos means. Let us search the real Biblos. Biblos. This is Biblos. Strong's G nine seventy six. Biblos. Biblos. That's uh, what does it mean? A written book, a roll, or a scroll? A scroll. That's it. But he makes a book of books. It is a book, a just book. Biblos means nothing but book. And he doesn't know anything, but you know, he keeps on talking and talking. Let's continue and find out his uh, lies. Well, the present Bible, according to me and according to scholars, it is a mixture. It does contain in some places the word of God that is remnants of the Injil. It even contains the word of the prophets. It even contains words of historians. Unfortunately, it even contains pornography. It's a mixture. So who's the author? Many human beings also wrote according to the Christian scholars. John, Matthew, 
it is gospel according to john gospel according to matthew gospel according to luke what quran says is gospel according to jesus christ peace be upon him what we believe in the all right uh, he says uh, it's about written by men the gospel i am i have uh, uh, about the phonography the Bible is not a book of phonography. It doesn't have anything like, uh, containing. It's a book of holiness. But this crooked man tries to twist things and says all kind of evil against the word of God. He doesn't know anything even. He doesn't know. Because the Bible, how was the Bible written? Okay, let's go to and read what God says about the word of God. Not us, not him. Not anybody else. Now, let me take you what the principle of how the principle, how the Bible was uh, written on, uh, how God uh, used um, to write the Bible. Now, Second Peter, Second Peter, chapter one, verse twenty. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. He says he cannot use. You cannot abuse the Bible as, uh, you know, the religious people abused it, like the Catholics, the Orthodox, and others. They abuse the Word of God. And these Muslims, the fanatic Muslims, they are abusing the gospel of Jesus Christ. But what, is, what does it say? Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in all the time by the will of man. It is not from man. It is not by the will of Paul, by the will of Peter, by the will of John, by the will of Luke, by the will of Mark, by, by, by the will of Isaiah, but by God, but holy men. Yes, men of God, holy men, not uh, a man who married six year old when he was 50 something, <laughs> who took his, his son's wife for himself, for a wife, snatch uh, the, his wife's son that like the prophet Muhammad. No, it's not. But by holy men, these men of God were holy and they are, they are the people of God chosen and made holy. But holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Holy men, remember, holy men moved by Holy Spirit. Holy men driven by the Holy Spirit. Holy men inspired by the Holy Spirit. Holy men, anxioned by the Holy Spirit, wrote the Bible. The prophecy of the Word of God, the whole Bible is a prophecy. So man, it is given from God. God led them by the Holy Spirit. It is not the work of man in every part of the Bible, in every, either in the, in, in, in the Torah or in the, the you know, the five book of Moses, or the Tana, the whole Bible of the Old Testament, or the New Testament, or the whole Bible, it is by the power of God, and the Holy Spirit caused it to be written. It, we call it the Word of God. We don't say the Word of Matthew, but to def differentiate, to differentiate one book from another, to, refer to get reference, we use, we use, our fathers used, like, According to Matthew, according according to Matthew, it doesn't mean he, he got it, but he he is not he he's not the author of the Bible. He was given, he was given to write an instruction by the Holy Spirit. Matthew was given, Luke was given, Mark was given, uh, Paul was given. They were given by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit which worked in them, in them, in them. Now the, the the thing is, look. Now this is a this is a Quran. This is a Quran. Al Fatah, the opening. Uh, Al Baqarah, the cow. The family of Imran. Uh, Al Imran. An Nisa, the woman. The food. The cattle. This is a what? The food. The cattle. What does it mean? This is their Quran. Even he doesn't pay attention to his his um, 
his his book, the elevated places, the spoiled of all, the repentance, Jonah. That what does it mean? Jonah. This is it. Jonah. Hood. Joseph. B because it say according to Joseph or according to Matthew or according to anything. But this is a, this, but he doesn't pay attention. The tender Abraham, the rock, the bee, the night journey, the cave, Mary, uh, that's Sur Surah to Al Maryam, Mary, Taha, the prophet, the pilgrimage, the believers, the light, the creation, the pot, the ant. Come on, even ant, the ant. What is what? The spider. <laughs> oh, come on. This is your book. It's a j jerk, j a bunch of things, you know, coming together. The devil, uh, the moon, and all this. Oh, according to Matthew. According to. He. Okay, let's continue. Okay, well, this is. Uh, we don't have to continue. I have. Um, uh, prepared and I'm going to uh, attach it that is you know how the the book of the Quran the Quran is a book of phonography how the hadith is totally explicitly phonographic in nature the whole thing all the whole actions of Muhammad Muhammad is nothing but a phonographic activity having uh, sex with a small child being 55 56 and having sex with nine year old isn't that isn't that even the dis the description isn't the description for phonographic you will find it out just listen thank you for listening and I hope you're gonna listen and uh, understand how despicable is the 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 the, the the description of the, the the sexual explicitness of the the book of the Quran and the the Hadith and the Sunnah, and I'm going to put it there, and Siri is going to read it for you. Uh, I hope you're gonna learn and get something out of this um, uh, uh, discussion. May God richly bless you. If you have any question, feel free to send me um, or ask me or leave a message. Uh, please share with others and uh, uh, help uh, help me uh, spirit this message as uh, as much as possible. May God richly bless you, my dear one. Have a nice day. Take care. It even contains pornography. It's a mixture. So who's the author? Many. You. It even contains words of historians. Unfortunately, it even contains pornography. It's a mixture. So who's the it contains pornography. Okay, I'll see w which one contains pornography. Islam by Sahih Bukhari, Volume 1, Book 4 Evolutions, The Laws of Cleansing in Islam, 231. Narrated Sulaiman bin Yazir, I asked Aisha about the clothes soiled with semen. She replied, I used to wash it off the clothes of Allah's apostle and he would go for the prayer while water spots were still visible. Quotation mark. 232. Narrated AMR bin Maimon. I heard Sulaiman bin Yazir talking about the clothes soiled with semen. He said that Aisha had said, I used to wash it off the clothes of Allah's apostle and he would go for the prayers while water spots were still visible on them. 233. Narrated Aisha. I used to wash the semen off the clothes of the Prophet and even then I used to notice one or more spots on them. The wives of the Prophet used to go to al Manasi, a vast open place near Bakia at Medina, to answer the call of nature at night. Umar used to say to the Prophet, let your wives be veiled. But Allah's apostle did not do so. One night Sada bin Sama, the wife of the Prophet, went out at Aisha time and she was a tall lady. Umar addressed her and said, I have recognized you, O Sada. He said so, as he desired eagerly that the verses of Al-Hijjab, the observing of veils by the Muslim women, may be revealed. So Allah revealed the verses of Al-Hijjab, a complete body cover excluding the eyes. Sahih Bukhari, Volume 7, Book 62, Number 173, narrated Javir bin Abdullah. The Prophet said, If you enter your town at night, after coming from a journey, do not enter upon your family till the woman whose husband was absent from the house shaves her pubic hair and the woman with unkempt hair combs her hair. Allah's apostle further said, O Jabir, seek to have offspring, seek to have offspring. Commentary of Imam al nawawi on the hadith, the saying of the Prophet, peace be upon him when he sits between her four parts, mostly its home animal, Shubiha al-Arba, and has intercourse with her then fatigues her in another narration the word Ashubiha is used.
The scholars have disagreed about the intended meaning of shuvihat al arba, the fours, for some said that it means the arms and the legs, while others have said that it refers to the legs and thighs, and others said it means the legs and the edge of the pubic area. Al Qadiyah chose the meaning of the four areas surrounding the vagina. The word, shav, means areas, its singular form being, shuba, as for those who say, ashbeha, that is the plural of the word, shav. The word ajhadaha, fatigue her, means to plow her, which was also stated by al Qadabi. Others have said it means to make her reach exhaustion as in the phrase she made him toil and labor till he was exhausted. al Qadiyad, may Allah rest his soul said primarily, the word, jihadaha, means that the man exerted his effort working in a woman, where the word, jud, means energy and refers to motion by describing the type of work. This is similar to his, the prophet, saying he who plowed her meaning he who penetrated her by his motion. Otherwise, what other fatigue could a man experience because of her, and Allah knows best. The meaning of the hadith is that the necessity to wash is not limited to when semen is ejaculated, rather it is when the penile head, hashfa, lip, the head of the male member, that is head of the penis, penetrates the vagina, then it is necessary for the man and the woman to wash. There is no disagreement on this today, even though there was disagreement on this by some of the early companions and others later. However, an agreement was later reached and this is what we have shown and presented previously. Our companions have said that if the penile head has penetrated a woman's anus, or a man's anus, or an animal's vagina or its anus then it is necessary to wash whether the one being penetrated is alive or dead, young or old. Whether it was done intentionally or absent-mindedly, whether it was done willfully or forcefully this also applies if the woman places the male member inside her while the man is asleep, whether the penis is erect or not, whether the penis is circumcised or uncircumcised. All these situations require that the person committing the act and the one the act is committed on must wash themselves, unless the person committing the act or the person the act is committed on is a young male or female. In that case it cannot be said that the person must wash, for they do not have the responsibility, rather it is said that this person is in a state of impurity. If that person can discern the sexual act, then his guardian can command him to wash just as he commands him to perform the evolution washing for prayers. For if he prays without washing, his prayer has not been performed correctly. Likewise if he doesn't wash after he reaches puberty he must be forced to wash. If he washed as a youth and then reaches puberty, then he does not have to repeat the washing. Our companions have said that intercourse occurs when a healthy male's penile head completely penetrates. An orifice, as has been unanimously agreed. Thus, when the penile head has completely disappeared, inside the orifice, then all the regulations concerning washing apply. It is unanimously agreed that it is not necessary that the entire penile shaft penetrate to apply the regulations of washing. If part of the penile head penetrates, then the regulations of washing are not imposed as is agreed, except by an odd few of our companions who said that even in this case all the regulations of washing apply. However, this opinion is wrong, rejected and abandoned. If the male member was severed and what remained was less than the length of the penile head, then none of the washing regulations apply. If the part remaining was equal in length to the penile head length then that part must completely penetrate for the regulation of washing to apply. If the part remaining was greater in length to the penile head length then there are two famous opinions for our companions. The most correct is that if the portion that penetrates is equal to the length of the penile head, then the regulations for washing apply. The other opinion is that none of the regulations for washing apply until the entire remaining length of the penile shaft completely penetrates and Allah knows best. If a man wraps a sheath around his male member and then ejaculates inside a woman's vagina, then there are three opinions from our companions. The most famous is that the man must wash. The second is that he does not have to wash because he ejaculated inside the sheath. The third is that if the sheath is thick and prevents climax and wetness in the vagina, then washing is not necessary. Otherwise it is necessary and Allah knows best if a woman inserts in her vagina an animal's penis she must wash. And if she inserts a detached penis, Thakarin Maktuin, lit, a severed male member, there are two opinions. The most correct is that she must wash. Sahih Muslim, Book of Menstruation, Hadith number 525. Commentary men can enter if they give Muhammad what is between their legs. Edit. Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, Umar ibn Ali narrated and told me Khalifa Umar ibn Al Ali told us told us Abu Hazim from Sal bin Sa'd al Saudi. The Prophet peace be upon him said. Whoever entrusts to me what is between his legs and what is between his lips will be granted paradise. Sahib Bukhari 6309 men are rewarded with undefiled virgins. Edit. For the companions of the right hand, we have created, their companions, of special creation, and made them virgin, pure, and undefiled. Quran 56 hours, and 35 minutes 36 men will have 72 virgins each. Edit. It was mentioned by Daraj ibn Abi Hadim, that Abu al-Haytham Adullah ibn Wab narrated from Abu Sa'id al-Qadri. 
who heard the Prophet Muhammad PBUH saying, The smallest reward for the people of heaven is an abode where there are 80,000 servants and 72 huri, over which stands a dome decorated with pearls, aquamarine and ruby, as wide as the distance from al jbii to San A. 1. al tirmidhi Volume 4. CH 21. Number 2687 It was reported in the Hadith of al Mikdam ibn Madikar that the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, The martyr, Shahid has seven blessings from Allah. He is forgiven from the moment his blood is first shed. He will be shown his place in paradise. He will be spared the trial of the grave, and he will be secure on the day of the greatest terror, the day of judgment. There will be placed on his head a crown of dignity, one ruby of which is better than this world and all that is in it. He will be married to 72 of Al-Hur al -Iyn, and he will be permitted to intercede for 70 of his relatives. According to another report, the martyr has six blessings from Allah. According to other reports, the number is six, or nine, or ten, narrated by al tirmidhi who said it is a Hazan Hadith. Also narrated by Ibn Majah and al-Sunan, by Ahmad, by Abd al-Razak and al-Musanath, by al-Tabarani and al-Kabir, and by Siad Ibn Mansur and al-Sunan, the six blessings of the martyr Sheikh Walid al firian Islam Q&A, Fatwa number 8511 The mention of 70 or more whores for the Shahid is reported by several Sahaba, Radhi Allahu Anham, of the Mar, 1. Sayyiduna Mikdad Ibn Ma'adikarid, Radhi Allahu Anhu, recorded by Imam Tirmidhi in his Sunan. Hadith 1663 Imam Tirmidhi has classified this hadith as Sahih, authentic to Sayyiduna Ubadat Ibn Thabit, Radhi Allahu Anhu, recorded by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad, Hadith 17117, Imam Bazar in High Musnad and Imam Tabrani in his Al Majmu Al Kabir Majma As Sa'id, Volume 5 PG, 293, Hafiz Munsiri, Ra, has classified the chain of narrators of Musnad Ahmad as Hazan Bold Text. Sound, al targhi Volume 2 PG, 320, and Hafiz al-Haythami, Ra, has mentioned that the narrators of Musnad Ahmad and Tabrani are all reliable and Allah Ta'ala knows best Maulana Muhammad Ibn Maulana Harun Abbasamur faculty of specialty in hadith checked and approved. Mufti Ebrahim Desai the number of whores, 70 or more, in Jannah for a Shahid or a Janathi is fixed by which hadith? and in which book men will be given the sexual strength of 100 persons. Edit. The Holy Prophet said, The believer will be given such and such strength in paradise for sexual intercourse. It was questioned, O Prophet of Allah can he do that? He said, He will be given the strength of 100 persons. Misgat al Masabit, Book 4, CH 42, Number 24 A man's penis will remain ever erect. Edit Abu Yumama narrated, The Messenger of God said, Everyone that God admits into paradise will be married to 72 wives. Two of them are Huris and 70 of his inheritance of the female dwellers of hell. All of them will have libidinous sex organs and he will have an ever-erect penis. 